Hey guys, welcome to day number 16 of the Talk to the Camera Challenge. And today's topic will be about talk about your favorite movies slash TV shows. So, this is, should be like bread and butter to me because, I mean, as if it's like not a dead giveaway. If you see behind me, like, hello? Yeah, I'm a movie buff. So, yeah, this is my bread and butter. I also like TV shows as well. I I watch my fair share of sort of TV shows. But, yeah, so, favourite movies. I'll give you a top 10 rather than a, a top 100. So, yeah, no particular order. I'm not ranking these anywhere of you know form so yeah so 10 movies so i would say synetic new york is a 2008 movie uh, directed by charlie kaufman starring the always fantastic philip seymour hoffman other one will be mary and max it's a australian stop motion 2009 movie also starring Philip Seymour Hoffman. Jaws. Do I need to explain that? No, I don't. It's Jaws. And... Should I cheat? No, I shouldn't cheat. I was going to say Lord of the Rings and named Fellowship, Two Towers and Return, but I'm just going to make them a combined tr uh, trilogy. So I'll say for the Lord of the Rings trilogy, it's it's lightning in the ball. It's it, and it's also a miracle that they struck like three times. The lightning three times strike, yeah, strike lightning in the ball three times with those movies, and never again, we would get anything like that. I don't think, maybe we will, but we'll see. Uh, yep, I'm gonna do it again. Um, the Kill Bill, sort of movies. Yeah, one and two. I'm going to condense them to just, yeah, just one category. And uh, what else? Do, 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 do. Favorite movies, favorite movies. Probably The Dark Knight. Yeah. Yeah, Dark Knight. Probably. Um, it's a movie that always gets referenced like today in terms of comic books or the best sequels of all time. It's either Empire Strikes Back or The Dark Knight. And there's a reason why. And uh, da, 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 da. I'm just looking at my film collection just to see if anything springs to mind because at the moment my mind is blank. Eh. That's number seven. I think I'm about. I think I'm about to lose count. Uh, the sh oh, the Shining, the Shining, fantastic movie. And it's all. It's a movie that you always pick up on every time you watch it. Yeah, probably boogie, uh, probably boogie nights, and they would be blood. And lastly, I would probably say I'm looking around again. Is it my favorite? Uh, taxi driver. I'll say taxi driver. If I have to pick a top ten, if it was a top one hundred, it'd be different, but. A top 10, those are my top 10. I think it's top 10. I kind of lost count after that it happens when this is unscripted. Now, uh, so yeah, I'm going to talk about, i name a few movies that I love after naming all those. So, Synetic New York, uh, I mentioned at the beginning. It's, it's a movie that really changed sort of my uh, a point of view or how I 
approach to watch movies, it really changed it a lot in terms of how it was executed, in terms of the themes, because it's such a, it's not, it's a very complicated movie. Uh, basically, if you if you don't know what Synetic New York is about, you know that you know what the, the the saying that people you know there's a saying that people say is, man, you know this this year's gone you know this year's gone quick you know people always say that people you know this this year's gone quick, our oh, time really does fly. Well, they made a movie about that. They made a movie. Of that concept about, you know, time not only not only about time, but it's about death, about an artist trying to create something. It's about his relationship with other people. About how he, you know, it's about his health. You know, not only mental mental health, but his health as well. And yeah, it's. It's a it's a movie that it's it's just marvelous, but very very yeah, probably not marvelous is not the marvelous is not the right word. Maybe just it's complex. It's it's unique and you know it wasn't well received when it first released, but now it's taken a whole new meaning now with new viewers watching it. And really seen its brilliance, and I've said the last one. Um, Mary and Max is a very, as a, I feel, a personal sort of connection to it. It's a you know it's a, it's a stop motion movie uh, about two characters. One's called Mary, who lives in Australia, who doesn't have any friends at all. She's in a very sort of toxic. Uh, you know, sort of home environment, and it cuts to, and then we, another character named Max who lives in New York City by himself. In the sort of seventies, uh, around the seventies time, so it's very sort of rough and just sort of, yeah, not a pleasant time time to stare, and. Yeah, yeah, it's just these two people who couldn't be more different, but the only thing they have in common is that they have the lonely, the you know, of course, you know, they don't fit in, and they got their own sort of unique differences to each other. One of the things I actually relate to Max a lot, and I still relate to this even now, is whenever Max, because he follows sort of a, a Sort of like a tired and sort of boring like daily routine that he follows, but whenever something new comes along, when something come like something new that comes along that sort of alters his schedule a bit, that you know, because when you do something over and over again, it, it, it you know it, it's a walk in the park. You don't think about it. You just sort of you can do it in your sleep, but. When something new comes your way, especially for Max, it sort of derails everything. Like he just sits because he he mentions that everything, anything that come, anything new that comes, he he goes into a corner and he's just like, like what do I do? Like you know, and it takes him a while to sort of approach that, sort of how to tackle it. And I'm like that a bit. I'm like that as well, you know. I'm like that. I'm still like that. Even even today, you know, whenever something new comes, uh, that's a new sort of opportunity. That's you know, that's uh, that's scary at first, but you you sort of warm up to it a bit to sort of approach it, or uh, you know. And the fact that growing up, I didn't really have that much like friends that often you know so i relayed a lot to the loneliness and the line that that stuck with me the most and i even mentioned this as well whilst uh, doing this is i think mary said it she said um 
I'm paraphrasing, but she says, I'm glad we get to choose our friends. You know, I'm glad we get to choose our friends. You know, if you haven't seen those movies, check them out. It's great. And now TV show. For TV show, I have to say Breaking Bad. I know it's obvious, I know it's, of course, but it's like, it's so good, man, it's so good, like, damn, because it's weird, because, like, it, it, Breaking Bad ended around the time when it was sort of, like, picking up steam, you know, it was sort of, it was honest, I think, around the last, like, season, it started to get more popular, but it was, it was ending, so I remember watching it while it was on its last sort of season, its last episode. So I started watching it first season, and since I live in the UK, and I at that time I don't think Breaking Bad was on our TVs yet, or not a lot of people were using Netflix that much back in my day, and this was like 2013, by the way. Like, damn. 11 years ago but yeah so yeah a lot of people didn't like i was watching because i heard of course i heard because i'm i'm all i'm always on the internet so i'm very i always look like overseas overseas like what people else are watching or what else is good movies or tv shows and people were talking about this show called breaking bad so i watched it on my computer because I, I find a way to watch these things and yeah and it was really really even at the age of 14 I was hooked like on the show and nobody at the time like nobody from you know from the people that I knew didn't even know what what the show was that you know at school like the teachers didn't know what what it what the show was, my parents, my parents didn't know what the show was, you know, they never heard of it, and so I started watching it, because I used to visit my dad, like, during weekends, he'd be watching TV, I'd be on my laptop in the living room, got my earphones in, and I'd just watch an episode, and I can... He notices that I'm watching the show and he asked me like, well, what's, what's the show that you're watching? And I said, it is, you know, Breaking Bad. And just, he was like, oh, okay. And every time I came to visit, I'm on different seasons. And yeah, you, you also, you always just sort of, you will lock over and see me watching the show. So eventually he got interested himself and he watched, he started watching it himself. And I remember this even to this day. I remember he he was watching. I think this second season. He was he, he was on the he was on the second se uh, season um, when I went to go and, and visit him. And I think he watched about five episodes in like one night, like late at night, because he just couldn't stop watching it. Because I remember that as soon as the episode ends, he was just like. Next episode, <laughs> you know, I never see it. It was crazy. It was really funny, <laughs> yeah. and and yeah, it, it just saw sort of caught on. I think he told his friends. You know, my dad told his friends about it, and it sort of spread like wildfire. I didn't. I'm not saying I. I'm not saying I I knighted the I, I knighted the flames, you know, but. I helped <laughs> but yeah that's one show it's yeah it's it's addictive it's it's even years after even years after it aired after it finished I still find new details about it as well filmmaking wise or maybe the choices in the actors approach to the characters you know just you, you, I always find new things, and I think that's always uh, a benefit to a lot of 
TV shows and movies as well. Like you find new things every time you watch it, you know? It's like Heath Ledger's performance in The Dark Knight. Every time I watch that movie or I look up some trivia about the movie, there is always like a new thing that comes up about his performance that you've never or I never sort of noticed before. So yeah. And other TV show, probably like, maybe, I would say the first season and the fourth season of Game of Thrones are probably peak sort of TV. And then, after that, it sort of went downhill after that, of course. So yeah, one to four seasons. Yeah, season one to season four. Game of Thrones, I say that's the best, everything else sucked. Well, so Death Note, Death Note is a, it's a fantastic show, great soundtrack, and uh, yeah, I think that's it, yep. So yeah, those are my favourite movies and TV shows. And that concludes day number I forgot. Day number sixteen of the Talk to the Camera Challenge. Well, that's one down, more to go. Thanks for watching and goodbye.